Hi and welcome to a new section of the course, Building an API. In this section we'll be learning how to build a RESTful API. We'll also learn about handling authentication. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with building a RESTful API. In this video we start with installation of Django, then we'll define serializers, understand parsers and renderers, we'll build list and detail views, custom views and create nested serializers. You might want to create an interface for other services to interact with your web application. By building an API, you can allow third parties to consume information and operate with your application programmatically. There are several ways you can structure your API, but following REST principles is encouraged. The RESTful architecture comes from representational state transfer. RESTful APIs are resource-based. Your models represent resources and HTTP methods such as GET, POST, PUT or DELETE are used to retrieve, create, update or delete objects. HTTP response codes are also used in this context. Different HTTP response codes are returned to indicate the result of an HTTP request. The most common formats to exchange data with RESTful APIs are JSON and XML. We'll build a RESTful API with JSON serialization for our project. Our API will provide retrieve subjects, retrieve available courses, retrieve course contents and enrol in a course. We can build an API from scratch with Django by creating custom views. However, there are several third-party modules that simplify creating an API for your project, but most popular among them being Django REST Framework. Now we'll start with installing the Django REST Framework. Django REST Framework allows you to easily build REST APIs for your project. You can find all information about REST Framework at this link. Now, open the command prompt and install the framework using the command install Django REST Framework. You successfully installed the Django REST Framework. Edit the settings.py file of your project. Also add these commands. You can provide a specific configuration for your API using the REST Framework setting. REST Framework offers a wide range of settings to configure default behaviours. The Default Permission Classes setting specifies the default permissions to read, create, update or delete objects. We set the Django Model Permissions or Anon Read Only as the only default permission class. This class relies on Django's permission system to allow users to create, update or delete objects while providing read-only access for anonymous users. You'll learn more about permissions later. For a complete list of available settings for the REST framework, you can visit this link. Now we'll look at defining serializers. After setting up the REST framework, we need to specify how our data will be serialized. Output data has to be serialized into a specific format and input data will be deserialized for processing. The framework provides these classes to build serializers for single objects. Serializer provides serialization for normal Python class instances. Model serializer provides serialization for model instances. Hyperlinked model serializer. The same as model serializer, but represents object relationships with links rather than primary keys. Let's build our first serializer. Create this API file structure inside the courses application directory. Create a new file and save in the API folder. Name it as serializers.py. Edit the serializers.py file and add this code. This is the serializer for the subject model. Serializers are defined in a similar fashion to Django's form and model form classes. The meta class allows you to specify the model to serialize and the fields to be included for serialization. All model fields will be included if you don't set a fields attribute. Let's try our serializer. Open the command prompt and start the Django shell with the command python manage.py shell. Run this code.
In this example, we get a subject object, create an instance of subject serializer, and access the serialized data. You'll get this output. As you can see, the model data is translated into Python native data types. Now let's look at understanding parsers and renderers. The serialized data has to be rendered in a specific format before you return it in an HTTP response. Likewise, when you get an HTTP request, you have to pass the incoming data and deserialize it before you can operate with it. REST framework includes renderers and parsers to handle that. Let's see how to pass incoming data. Given a JSON string input, you can use the JSON parser class provided by REST framework to convert it to a Python object. Execute these commands in the Python shell. We're importing bytes library and JSON parser. You'll get this output. REST Framework also includes renderer classes that allow you to format API responses. The framework determines which renderer to use through content negotiation. It inspects the request's accept header to determine the expected content type for the response. Optionally, the renderer is determined by the format suffix of the URL. For example, accessing will trigger the JSON renderer in order to return a JSON response. Now execute this line of code to render the serializer object from the previous serializer example. You'll see this output. We use the JSON renderer to render the serialized data into JSON. By default, REST framework uses two different renderers, JSON renderer and browsable API renderer. The latter provides a web interface to easily browse your API. You can change the default renderer classes with the default renderer classes option of the REST framework setting. You can find more information about renderers and parsers at these websites. Now we will build list and detail views. REST framework comes with a set of generic views and mixins that you can use to build your API views. These provide functionality to retrieve, create, update or delete model objects. You can see all generic mixins and views provided by REST Framework at this website. Let's create list and detail views to retrieve subject objects. Create a new file inside the Courses API directory and name it views.py. Add this code to it. In this code, we are using the generic list API view and retrieve API view views of REST framework. We include a PK URL parameter for the detail view to retrieve the object for the given primary key. Both views have attributes. Query set, the base query set to use to retrieve objects. Serializer class, the class to serialize objects. Let's add URL patterns for our views. Create a new file inside the Courses API directory and name it urls.py. Add this code snippet. Now edit the main urls.py file of the Aduka project and include these API patterns. We use the API namespace for our API URLs. Ensure your server is running with the command python manage.py run server. Open the shell and retrieve the URL shown you'll get a response similar to this. The HTTP response contains a list of subject objects in JSON format. If your operating system doesn't come with CURL installed, you can download it from the website. Instead of CURL, you can also use any tool to send custom HTTP requests, such as a browser extension, such as Postman which you can get at getpostman.com. 
open the link in your browser. You will see the REST Frameworks Browsable API. This HTML interface is provided by the Browsable API renderer. renderer. It displays the results header and content and allows you to perform requests. You can also access the API detail view for a subject object by including its ID in the URL. You'll see a single subject object rendered in JSON format. Creating nested serializers. We're going to create a serializer for the course model. Edit the API serializers.py file and add the highlighted code to it. Let's take a look at how a course object is serialized. Open the shell. Run python manage.py shell. First, we will import the JSON renderer. Then we'll import course and course serializer. And then select course by ID. And finally, render the serialized data under JSON renderer. You'll get a JSON object with the fields we included in course serializer. You can see that the related objects of the modules manager are serialized as a list of primary keys, like this. We want to include more information about each module, so we need to serialize module objects and nest them. Modify the previous code of the API serializers.py file to make it look like this. Let's add and append the code to make it look like this. We define a module serializer to provide serialization for the module model. Then we add a modules attribute to course serializer to nest the module serializer serializer. We set many is equal to true to indicate that we are serializing multiple objects. The read only parameter indicates that this field is read only and should not be included in any output to create or update objects. Open the shell and import JSON renderer, modules and module serializer libraries. Create an instance of module serializer. Render the serializer's data attribute with JSON renderer. This time the listed modules are being serialized with the nested module serializer serializer, like this. You can read more about serializers on this website. Now we'll move on to building custom views. REST Framework provides an API view class which builds an API functionality on top of Django's view class. The API view class differs from view in using REST Framework's custom request and response objects and handling API exception exceptions to return the appropriate HTTP responses. It also has a built-in authentication and authorization system to manage access to views. Now we're going to create a view for users to enroll in courses. Edit the views.py file of the API directory and add this code to it. This code performs some functions like we create a custom view that subclasses API view. We define a post method for post actions. No other HTTP method will be allowed for this view. We expect a PK URL parameter containing the ID of a course. We retrieve the course by the given PK parameter and raise a 404 exception if it's not found. We add the current user to the student's many-to-many -many relationship of the course object and return a successful response. Now edit the API URLs.py file and add this URL pattern for the course enroll view. Theoretically, we could now perform a post request to enroll the current user in a course. However, we need to be able to identify the user and prevent unauthenticated users from accessing this view. We'll see how API authentication and permissions work next. In this video, we've learned all about building a RESTful API. Great!